All right, uh, just a quick review of our last two sessions. Like I said earlier, we are now in the second module of our Christian Life program. Module two is our response to module one. So our first, uh, first response is talk number four. It is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is to love our neighbor as ourselves. So there is no other commandment greater than this. And our speakers talk about how we can fulfill these commandments in our lives. Okay. In talk number five, in our last session, the next response is to love our families. Like what they say, charity begins at home. And this is the ideal of life that a Christian family ought to aspire to. Uh, the Christian life is a life of love and service that revolves around Jesus Christ and love of neighbor. Okay. Of course, all of these responses, loving God, loving neighbor, loving your family, it is only possible with the help of the Holy Spirit because on our own, we can do it. Uh, so our question tonight is, who is the Holy Spirit? Of course, you know, all of us know who is the Holy Spirit, but for some of us, it, we know him by paper, in paper only, as a doctrine. He, of course, you know him as the third person of the Holy Trinity. However, a lot of us don't know that there is such thing as a life in the Holy Spirit, a fellowship in the Holy Spirit and empowering by the Holy Spirit. And we sometimes we don't see the Holy Spirit makes a difference in our Christian life and that it's not important in our faith journey or experience. And why? It's understandable because the Holy Spirit seems mysterious. We treat the Holy Spirit with certain distance. We even call the Holy Spirit as a Holy Ghost. Okay, no wonder we don't know the Holy Spirit because we are scared of him. Well, not tonight. Because the job of our speaker tonight is to introduce to you, or perhaps reintroduce to you again, the Holy Spirit so that you may come to know him and grow in fellowship with him. So I'd like to introduce to you our speaker for tonight. Our speaker is well loved and respected by our community. He is always invited to speak on special topics, such our topic for tonight, uh, the Holy Spirit. Brother Edward Bochok Gonda is married to Faye, uh, and they got married 14 years ago in 2007. They have two adorable children, Julianne, who is 12 years old, and Ethan, who is eight. So you can see their picture here. They have been with CFC in the Philippines, way back in the Philippines since 1993 as singles for Christ. But as a couple, they have been with CFC in the USA for the last 12 years since 2009. Uh, Brother Bochok has served in many in different capacities in CFC and now he's the Southern California cluster head for CFC kids. Brother Bocho currently works in the City of Hope in the IT department. But okay, but before I turn over the floor to Brother Bocho, let us watch the video prepared for us by CFC about the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? God is love. This love shared between God the Father and His beloved Son Jesus is the Holy Spirit. He is the third person of the Holy Trinity, oftentimes represented as a dove, as water, or as tongues of fire. The dove represents the Spirit that comes down on us and continuously purifies our hearts. The water signifies fruitfulness of life given in the Holy Spirit, while fire symbolizes the Holy Spirit's transforming energy and renewing action. The Holy Spirit gives us the graces that we need to live our lives as Christians. The Holy Spirit enlightens the mind and gives us a deeper understanding of God and the mysteries of our faith. It also strengthens our desire to love, honor, and serve God. We celebrate the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. 
Pentecost is the feast known as the birthday of our Catholic Church. The word Pentecost <coughs> is derived from the Greek word Pentecoste, meaning 50, signifying 50 days after Jesus' death and resurrection. Pentecost is the fulfillment of Christ's promise to the apostles before he ascended to heaven. In the Gospel of John, he promised that God the Father will send the Holy Spirit to teach and to remind the apostles of everything that Jesus told them, so they should not be afraid. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus also promised that the apostles will be his witnesses and they shall be clothed with power from on high. So if Pentecost is the fulfillment of Jesus' promise, then what did happen at Pentecost? After Jesus ascended to heaven, Mother Mary, the apostles, and the first followers of Jesus were gathered together in the upper room. Then suddenly, there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and tongues of fire came to rest on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit that they began to speak in different languages. Now there were devout Jews from every nation staying in Jerusalem at that time. These people ran over to see what all the noise was about and were surprised to hear that their own languages were being spoken. They were so amazed that they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each one of us hear them in our own native language? Then Peter stood up and explained that what they were experiencing is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He then proceeded to proclaim who Jesus was, that he is the Savior who was crucified, died, and was raised from the dead. He called on the crowd to repent and turn to Jesus for salvation. At that moment, there were 3,000 people who then came to believe and were baptized on that same day. From then on, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the disciples began to go to other nations to proclaim the message of Jesus. Just like the early disciples, we too shall continuously be renewed, transformed, and empowered from our baptism to the Holy Spirit's fuller release in our confirmation to our everyday life through the graces received in, through, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. All right. Um, so to talk more about the Holy Spirit, let us welcome Brother Bochok. Yes. Take it away. <laughs> okay. That's me. All right. Uh, brothers and sisters, good evening. First of all, good evening. I also have uh, a brief introduction about me too. Me and my wife serve in the parishes of Precious Blood and St. Kevin Church here in uh, downtown Los Angeles, in Koreatown, and in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, if you know the Jollibee here in Beverly Boulevard, then that's where my parish is, close to the Jollibee. Yeah, so, but yeah, I also served there as a, their IT and audiovisual consultant, especially during the pandemic. So it's good to, to, to serve and give a talk to fellow, you know, parish workers also, especially those who work, uh, who serve in uh, Incarnation Church. All right, so today, just like what Brother Abe said, we're going to, we're going to talk about empowered this is this is uh this is uh what i am um, this is what i'm uh, assigned today empowered by the holy spirit uh, brother abe can you make sure that my my camera is on spotlight so everybody can see can see what i'm showing and cuz i'm small now so they can see <laughs> all right can everybody see me good it's like a big screen all right all right um, okay so so what I'm going to talk about today is what's something that everybody should experience and that everybody should have in their life, all right? So, so I would like to ask you, if we talk about the Holy Spirit, there's a lot of things that we don't know what it is. Yes, we grew up in a Catholic, uh, we grew up in a Catholic school, some of us, some of us are serving in church, have friends in, we have friends as, with priests and, you know, a lot of us. Uh, get exposed to this word in our daily lives, Holy Spirit. But what is it actually, right? What is it actually? So let me give you some examples. 
All right. Some say, oh, I know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, you know, like in the Bible, it's a dove, you know, it's a dove like this one. It, it's something that when John the Baptist was, was uh, being baptized to the Holy Spirit, a dove came from below and go, get on his head. So we associate Holy Spirit with a dove, right? But some of us say, yeah, it's a dove. But I know some of us say it's fire too, right? It's something that, you know, it's, it's something that like the burning bush or something that fires us up. It's like fire, right? And, and some of us even can say, some of us even say, oh yeah, it's, it's a dove and it's a fire, right? So combine them together, you get, what do we get? Uh, a dove of fire. <laughs> right? so some, some of us say, this is, but what is it really? What is really the Holy Spirit? You know, sometimes it's not right. It's it's something should uh, rightly disturb us, disturb us, if you might think. Why? Because brothers and sisters, many. It's sad to say that many of our brothers and sisters nowadays are living without the strength, without the light, and the consolation born of friendship with Jesus Christ, without a community of faith to support them, and most especially without knowing what the Holy Spirit is. Meaning, uh, sometimes we get lost and we don't know even what the goal in life is, what our goal in life is. For those of you who are uh, figuring out what place are you in this earth or what place are you in your life, like when there's no more friends, no more brothers and sisters, no more co-workers, before you sleep at night, you're just by yourself. If you're the person who thinks, is this life? Is this what it is? Tomorrow I wake up, it's the same thing, right? I know a lot of us are here are, you know, not sinners, not big sinners, nothing really special happened in their life, but they're just a normal Christian, just a normal Catholic. And some of you are even searching, you know, for what, what is faith or where am I going to end up or what is the right thing for me? Where am I going to be comfortable? Well, I invite you tonight. You're not alone. A lot of us here cannot experience it because we lack the Holy Spirit. And hopefully tonight, I can explain to you what the Holy Spirit is. One fact, fact. You are all Catholic. We're all Catholic. I don't know if there's non-Catholics here. But for us Catholics, we go to baptism and we go to confirmation. Confirmation means the Holy Spirit is already bestowed upon us. It's already in us. But since we were young, we don't know what it is and we don't know what to do with it. So tonight, we're going to learn about that Holy Spirit in us and what it means to be empowered by it. Right? Okay, so let, let me start here. Okay, let me start here. Okay, let's go back to Brother Abe's PowerPoint here. And Christians today, much of Christianity today looks weak. You know, looks weak, looks lifeless. They lack in power. They lack in effectiveness. Why can I say this? Why do I say this? Because um, uh, people now tend to people now tend to live their lives online on social media and and tend to believe in a lot of fake news. This is our world today, right? Fake news, uh, politics, uh, cancel culture. There's a lot of things happening in the world right now that that's different. Right, that's the revolution uh, sexually. Uh, there's uh, gender identity. There's abortion. We're exposed to a lot of stuff. And I don't know if you remember that Pope Francis told us there are some things that are non-negotiables. Uh, but some of us go with that modern world, that modern thinking, saying, "Oh, it's okay. Why? Because everybody's thinking about it. Everybody believes in it. So I'll just go with the flow." Christianity today. I know you agree with me, is lifeless or weak. Compare it to the apostles, right, brothers and sisters? Peter got crucified upside down for his faith. Our apostles before, compared to now, the early Christian movement was dynamic, was strong, was attractive. Like, for example, how many of them? 12 plus a little handful of disciples, right? A small sect and subsequently conquered the whole Roman Empire. Why? How did they do it? 
Why are they strong compared to Christians now? Their source was the Holy Spirit. That's the secret. The source was the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, we see the Holy Spirit acting among them, guiding them, speaking to them, and giving them gifts. Good news. <laughs> Good news. On the 31st. Oh, I can hear my son. That's my son. <laughs> can you mute yourself, my wife? <laughs> All right. So, so, see, I can hear my dog now. <laughs> no, but... Good news, brothers and sisters. What I am discussing about the strength of the Holy Spirit in the old church is available to us now. It can also happen to all of us. We can still experience the same vigor, the same dynamism in our faith. You know, once we are able to fully understand what the Holy Spirit works in the Christian life, then we could experience fullness of life. Why? Because the Holy Spirit enables us to experience God, have a living relationship with Him, and His actions we take in our lives. But as I've said in the start, unfortunately, unfortunately, many of us now do not know or are close to the Holy Spirit as we are with the Father and the Son and Jesus Christ. I don't blame you guys. Because in church, in school or in media, we always focus on, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, we know the story of how God created the universe in six days and the seventh day he rested, right? And during Holy Week, we always know the, we know, not only Holy Week, we know the story of Jesus Christ from birth until he died, he resurrected again. But nobody really, not a lot, knows the story of the Holy Spirit. So tonight, that's what we're going to hit. That's what we're going to talk about. Hopefully, I can explain it in a way that I'm so passionate about it. I wanted to pass it on to you. You know, I want to pass on to you what the Holy Spirit is for me in that you feel and that you see him not only as something that you read or something that you, 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 you say in prayer in church, but something that is with you in your daily life. First question for the night. Who is the Holy Spirit? Okay. Who is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is God. He is the third person in the Holy Trinity. Right? In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, let me discuss that first. In 685's Catholic, Catechism of the Catholic Church, it says there, To believe in the Holy Spirit is to profess that the Holy Spirit is one of the persons of the Holy Trinity consubstantial with the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and He is glorified. So directly, the Catholic Church tells us that the Holy Spirit is the same as the Father and the Son, and He has to be worshipped. He has to be glorified. Holy Spirit is the name. We call, we call Him Holy Spirit, right? Holy Spirit is the proper name of the one whom we adore and glorify with the Father and the Son. That's again from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 691. Don't get me wrong. I, have it, I don't have it memorized. Okay, I have uh, notes here. <laughs> you might think I'm, uh, I memorized the Catholic, Catechism of the Catholic Church. But this is very intriguing to know. That it's, it is well, it is very defined in the, our teaching in the Catholic Church. That we should worship the Holy Spirit, and we should glorify it, and we call it Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, now, now um, the church teaches us that although there is one God, somehow there are three persons in God. The Father is God, the Son, Jesus Christ, is God, and the Holy Spirit in God is God. But yet, we do not speak of three gods, but only one God. Oh, confusing, confusing. How is that? Uh, yeah, we, this, is, this is, you know, a lifelong explanation that we have since we were young. Well, there are one God, but there's three natures. How? Uh, I, I like this, I like this uh, analogy of how they are different from one another. 
I know you all of you have explanations of how they're different from one another. But for me, this is the one that is really, uh, for me, really clarifies it all. Okay, let's see. How are they different in their nature? Again, even if they're three persons or are one God, they are very distinct from one another. Why? First, let's take the example of God the Father. God the Father has no origin. <laughs> Nobody knows. And they said, they told me, hey, what's, what's the only thing God doesn't know? I said, oh, uh huh? God doesn't know something? Yeah, he doesn't know who created him. <laughs> That's just a joke. But we don't know the origin of God. He just came to be as the one, right? So God has no origin. God the Son. We know him. He was born of Mary and Joseph. He was begotten. And he comes from the Father alone, right? So he come. We know he's the begotten Son of God born into this earth, right? And we know if you believe in him, you're going to have eternal life. But again, God the Father has an origin. Jesus is the begotten Son. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes or proceeds from both the Father and the Son, right? Nice and green. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. So these three different kinds of origins of God tell us that these are three distinct persons. We have one and the same divine nature. Is one God, the three natures. Right, so that's number one. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the Lord and the giver of life. Uh, the Holy Spirit is revealed to us as both person and divine. Right, uh, there's something uh, who died. Somebody asked who died when on on Good Friday. Who died on the cross? Is it the God, the, the person, or man? Jesus, the man. Well, it's, it's, it's Jesus' physical body, right? But uh, he, depict, he is depicted as a bearing witness. You know, he established a covenant with us too. He has referred to as the Lord, Jesus Christ. He puts laws into our hearts and he even forgives sins. That's the Lord. That's the name Lord, the giver of life. Right. How many Catholics realize that when we recite the Nicene Creed every Sunday at Mass, right? It's very clear. It's very concise, professing just what we see here in Scripture, right? It says there the Holy Spirit is the Lord, the giver of life. If we notice in the Gospel, Jesus was conceived in the womb of Mary through the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? No, G Joseph, I honor Joseph because he took Mary as his wife. But um, there's a book called uh, The Life of Jesus According to the Mystics, where, where Virgin Mary, it looks like it's semi fiction, but it was discussing the life of Jesus in the eyes of Mary. And it was there, I, I can just imagine it that light engulfed Mary, and then angels were singing, and then, and that's it. And then God said, that there's a baby now in Elizabeth, in her womb, right? When the angel told Mary that she would bear a son that would be the Messiah, of course, it puzzled her, right? Because how am I going to go out? I'm, I'm pregnant without a father, right? I don't have any relations with any man. Then the angel told her. What did he told her? I know you know this by heart. He said, the Holy Spirit will come to you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy Son of God. Luke 1 verse 35. That same spirit needs to be alive in us, in ourselves, in our personal lives. Why? Because only with the spirit we can enter the kingdom of God. John 3, verse 5. It is said, Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you. This is what Jesus said in that verse. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and born of the Spirit. And that's why we have baptism and confirmation. And confirmation, born of water and baptism. And, and Spirit of fire. Right? So again, that's the second thing. 
Who is the Holy Spirit? Can you repeat this? The Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life. Can you say that to yourself? The Lord and giver of life. Okay, next one. Can you say this again? Repeat after me. The Holy Spirit is the paraclete. Oh, I can hear you. It's so loud. <laughs> All right. What, what is a paraclete? What, what is paraclete? Uh, 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 how can I say this easily? Um, he's the one who bestows the charisms in the church. Right? The paraclete is the one who bestows charisms of the church. It's a term with very diverse meaning. That's why it's hard. Uh, but to look at the etymology of this, um, if we say the Holy Spirit is the, is, is the paraclete, like the Greek term means to exhort, right? To exhort, like to raise him up or to raise up people. But it has a wide range of meanings, you know, including uh, there's guide. Like I said, I took here, this is just around the internet. The paraclete is, is a, a friend, you know, it's a defender. Uh, there are times that the term also connotes the imparting of strength. Uh, but because of this wide range of mes meaning, in, in scripture, translated it in, in very different ways in English, right? Sometimes that trans translation means counselor, right? So since it provides guidance already. Um, some translate it as a helper, like in the sense of friendship, and some are advocates, you know, or legal defender. You know, what's interesting in the first century, in the first century, when they talk about paraclete, it means a defense attorney in legal proceedings. Right? It's just like Tita Sony here. It's an it's a attorney. <laughs> right? And finally, and finally, a paraclete means comforter. Right? Like it's a sense of giving strength. It's comforter. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very possible translation. As in, as in, in, the, in the book of John, we are not intended to pick the best meaning of paraclete, but rather to bear in mind that all these meanings are intended. You know, in the narrative, uh, I don't know if you, watch, uh, if you watch the Chosen series, the story of Jesus Christ through the eyes of the apostles, you know, the gospel is alive in that TV series, right? And uh, it really gives us a real view of the gospel. But if you go basic, like in the gospel of Luke, like if you imagine before Jesus Christ ascends to heaven, he shows himself to his disciples and spoke to them these worlds. He said, I am sending the promise of my father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. That's Luke 24 verse 49. Remember, he gathered all the apostles. He was on the mountain. He was raising up. And he told them, go to the village and wait for the Holy Spirit. Well, that alone, like, you're lucky. We're lucky in this age. Somebody can stand in front and explain to us what the Holy Spirit is. But during that time, when Jesus said, my Father's promise is going to be fulfilled, and the Holy, Holy Spirit is going to be sent from you, power from on high, nobody knew what it is. Right? Nobody knew what it is. They just went to a room, the upper room. They, they were waiting for whatever Jesus was referring to as power from on high. Paraclete, the Holy Spirit. You know what happened then, right? Tongues of fire. Wind around the upper house. They went out the room speaking in different languages. Peter was there. Crowd was saying, because remember that that place in town was the center of trade during that time. So a lot of people from different from different uh, uh, places went there to go to the market and go to trade. So there's a different people. And then Peter comes out of the room speaking in different languages. What will the pe How will the people react? They said, "Oh, they're just drunk." How many days are they there? Like nine days? <laughs> They're just drunk with, with the alcohol. Peter said, that time, very clear. The promise of God has been fulfilled. Power from on high has been sent. A healer, the paraclete is here. 3,000 people converted that day. 
3,000. The paraclete empowered them to be bold in their proclamation and witnessing, as well as to have the knowledge and wisdom in proclaiming the gospel. They started to preach out through their hearts. Life in the Holy Spirit is very important. Not because of only this event. Because it is the kind of life that God wants for us. You know, Ezekiel 36, 24 to 28. If you put yourself in this town, there's this prophet called Ezekiel. Let's talk about Ezekiel. Um, Ezekiel was a prophet in the Old Testament that goes from town to town. He stops at a certain town and then moves on to the next. But there's one time he stopped at this town that was so disturbing that he stayed there for a few months. Maybe a year, I don't know the length. But he stayed there, he stayed there for a duration, hoping that God will, will enlighten him on how to help his people. He was on the brink of giving up because this town was ruled by a ruthless king, Nebuchadnezzar. Right? And people were corrupt. People were, you know, uh, lonely and sad. People were, 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 there's a lot of crime. They're throwing, according to Bible scholars, on the time of Ezekiel and that town of Nebuchadnezzar, when government officials come out, people burn their houses, throw stuff at them. That's in a, that's in the totality of the town, right? But, but, Individually, people back then were, were sad, were lonely, were depressed, were losing hope. Imagine yourself as Ezekiel. So that's why he stayed at that town. And God gave him a promise. Ezekiel 36, verse 24 to 28. I want you to listen to the story. It's so easy. We don't even need a PowerPoint. It says, For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back to your own land. What does this mean? Bring them back to their own land. During that time, a lot of people in that place were self-exiled in Babylon and some other parts. Uh, but, and they gave up. They just left their town. But God said, the first thing I'm going to do, Ezekiel, to change your town is bring them back to your own land. If we continue on the verse, he says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. That means when he calls them back, God will cleanse them of their sins. Right? I pour water on them. And then he said, I will give you a new heart. You giving a new heart, we have, they have to receive it. A new heart means taking out the old heart and putting in a new one. He said, I will give you a new heart and put, this is the important thing. I will put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart, I will remove your stony hearts and give you a natural one, a heart of flesh. And I will put a, my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Then how did he end this verse? He said, after you receive the spirit and the new heart, he said, then you will live in the land I give your ancestors. You will be my people and I will be your God. It's a very beautiful story of how God transformed that town in bondage and in sin. And it's so clear. The Holy Spirit's role as the paraclete and the Lord, the giver of life is here. Right? Because he changed those people's hearts. He changed those people's spirit. And they became people of heaven. Brothers and sisters, if we go back to Acts, remember the time before Jesus called them. During that very moment, the disciples are hiding in fear when Christ died. Why? Because they might end up like Jesus' death on the cross. But the instructions of Jesus were clear to continue the mission. And before they were to be given the power to continue the mission, they had to be clothed with power from on high. Apparently, the Holy Spirit, 
the paraclete empowered them to be bold in the proclamation and witnessing as well as to have the knowledge and the wisdom of proclaiming the gospel. So before, if you understand that, before they could preach out, before they could go to the next town, before they could do miracles, they have to be clothed with the Holy Spirit. Life in the Holy Spirit is important because of that. Like the people of God during the time of Ezekiel, we have also become spiritual exiles. In our time, to 2021, a lot of us are, are in fear, living in fear. And of course, who, who doesn't fear for, especially when COVID, COVID came, right? A lot of us are becoming hopeless that I'm searching for a long time and God's not in my life. God is not showing himself. God is not manifesting himself. I'm done. I'm serving Boy, I'm serving the church for like 20 years and, and then this bad thing happens to me. I'm not saying everyone, right? But some of us feel tired. Some of us feel bruised and battered. Some of us are living in fear, just like what the apostle said. But you know what? Even if we are full of fear, I know a lot of you is longing to go home. I know a lot of you is longing to return to the place promised to us by God. How do I know? You're here. You're here in the CLP, right? Have you ever asked why you? Why not your neighbor? Why not your other relative? Why not this other person in church that sits beside me every mass? Why not my coworker? I've heard this all before, but why, why are you still here? I know why. Because of that longing. That longing to return to the place promised to us by God. You know, God didn't fail. He continues to call us. He continues to gather us. Why? He doesn't stop. Because he wants to prepare us to return to the kingdom of God. And once you respond to this call, it's not hard. You just say, Lord, yes, yes, that's it. Two words. Yes, God, I will respond to you. As soon as you respond to this call, he will pour on you the pure water, the grace of forgiveness to cleanse you from your sins. And then God will give you a new heart. And then God will place a new spirit within you. God will remove your heart of stone and give it a heart of flesh, a natural one. He will give you the power to resist sin and wrongdoing. How will he do it? He will do it by putting his Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, within us. As a result, his promise will be fulfilled. Right? If his promise to Ezekiel that came down to the apostles that toppled the whole Roman Empire, this news has reached you now. He will change you. And if you just say yes, that very simple yes, not yes for the person beside you, not your wife, not your boss, not your father, your mom, yes for yourself. If you say yes, then his promise will be fulfilled. Then you will return to the promised land. What's the promised land? God's kingdom here on earth. And you will be his people. And he will be our God. Wow, it's a great story, huh? Great story. Uh, okay, what do we gain? Uh, to summarize what I just said, to, to put it all in context, you know, to, to, to list down the facts. The things that I just said. I said, number one is you will have union with God. Right? You will have a new relationship with God as Father that is deep. That is personal. Ephesians 2 verse 18 says, For through Him we both have access by one Spirit 
unto the Father. It's like having a hotline to God, this Holy Spirit, right? So that's the first thing you're going to see. You're going to have union with God. You and God, Spirit will be one, all right? Next thing, you will have a new nature. A new nature is a, we're going to receive power, just like I said, for living the Christian life. I'm going to, I like to focus on Galatians 15 to 16, right? My notes, my notes. Galatians 5, 16 to 20. It says here, it says here, so I say walk in the spirit, Galatians 5, 16 to 22. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the flesh, what the flesh desires is, is contrary to what the spirit desires. They are in conflict with one another, it says in Galatians, so that you are not to do whatever you want, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. How do you explain that? Um, what is the desires of our flesh? It's very easy. If you're hungry, your flesh wants to eat. If you're thirsty, you need to drink, right? Uh, you need to have a job. You need to fulfill your flesh. If you're tired, you need a massage, right? Some of us, if you're tired, you need you know, to relax, watch TV, grab a bottle of beer at night, and then just watch TV, relax. Because well, that's what the Spirit is asking. There's, there's nothing wrong with fulfilling what's on your, that, what your flesh likes. There's nothing wrong with that. But they're lost regarding it. Like if you do in excess of what your, spirit's, your spirit wants, then that's kind of wrong already, right? Like greed for money or lust for flesh, right? So this, this kind of things. But the Lord said what the flesh desires and what the spirit desires cannot be put together. Separate. What does the spirit desire? The spirit, our spirit desires love. Our spirit this oh, it's here on, on, let me read to you in Galatians. This is what the flesh desires. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. He said, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So that's that's a summary of what the flesh desires. But what does the spirit desire? Spirit desires love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And many, many more. This is what the spirit desires. When you receive the Holy Spirit or when you're empowered by the Holy Spirit, clothed from on high, your life will change. Instead of satisfying your flesh, it would change to satisfying your spirit. This is like a chessboard. Don't get me wrong. Only black and white squares. There's no gray areas. Nobody can say, oh, I satisfy my flesh today. No, but when... The Holy Spirit, you get empowered by the Spirit, you gain this naturally. You won't even notice it becomes natural. Oh, well, yeah, I want to I want to serve God now. I want to fulfill my Holy Spirit. All right. So that's the second thing that you gain. First is union with God. The next is a new nature. The third thing is the power to serve. In Acts 1, verse 8, uh, there's a song in CFC says, You shall be clothed with power from on high. When the Holy Spirit comes to you and you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses. That's Acts 1 verse 8. Like witnesses. Uh, it's like a court case, right? Like we need witnesses to tell the truth according to what they saw. To make the case clear. Right? But if no one tells the truth, then nothing's happening. During the time of Ezekiel, when... He was preaching the good news or when you hear the priest say good news and then you share it to other people, you're becoming a witness. You're becoming a witness of his good deeds because you tell the truth to other people to make the case, to make something clear that you're under 
you believe in the spirit and you've been clothed and empowered by the spirit. So three things that you gain. Union with God. You gain a new nature. And you gain the power to serve. Are you still with me? Thumbs up? Right, thumbs up? Am I clear? Am I too fast? Or, or what? Oh, clear. I see a hand. I see a hand like this. I didn't see the face. I see a hand. Thumbs up. <laughs> All right. All right. Thumbs up. Yeah, it's so hard for Zoom, right? I can't see you. and uh, You can't see me, how handsome I am. No, I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> All of us you know, became handsomer during the pandemic, right? Became handsomer, became cuter, became more fit. <laughs> because we're beside the fridge every time. No? No, so no going to the fridge tonight, even if it's closed. I know some of you are in your sofas, in your bed, but don't be tempted, okay? Don't be tempted. So, brothers and sisters, as I've said, we can receive this power. We can. How? By claiming it, right? By saying yes. Well, we need to ask God the Father in faith to give us the Holy Spirit. For us Christians, for us Christians, Catholics, this will, as I've said, this will be the, not the, this is not the first time we're going to receive the Holy Spirit. We're going to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We already received the Holy Spirit during baptism and confirmation, water and fire. But rather, what we need is a fuller release of the Spirit in our lives you know, to release it. To, to reap the benefits of what is in there in our bodies. What did God put in there? There's a reason for everything, you know. That. God doesn't put things in our bodies just for nothing. But he put the Holy Spirit in us for a reason, right? And, and what is that reason? Well, he wants, of course, he wants to change our lives. He wants, he wants to have union with us, you know. But when he put that in us, some of those reasons are being defined by the gifts. There are gifts associated with us, with this, you know. There are gifts associated with this. Uh, there are two kinds of gifts, actually, that oh, I have graphics. There are two kinds of gifts of the Holy Spirit that it comes packaged with it, <laughs> right? It comes packaged with it. These are some benefits. Number one, there's a hierarchy. I'm, I'm having a problem saying this again every time. Hierarchical gifts, all right? Hierarchies, like, like king, queens, you know, they have hierarchies. In church, we have hierarchies, like bishops, archbishops, you know. These gifts are bestowed to the leaders of the church to ensure that what Jesus established with Peter as the rock continues, you know? This is Jesus' salvific mediation. You know, it's like, he wants to continue what he established during the Old Testament. So he bestowed hierarchical gifts to the leaders of the church. Our priests, our bishops, our archbishops, our cardinals, and the Pope. You know, But there's another kind of gift that I want to discuss today. I said two, right? There's the charismatic gifts. The charismatic gifts are packaged and given to you by God. To enable us, to enable the faithful, the laymen, to do evangelical mission. To continue the, the job of the church, but this equips us. In, in, just imagine an, a full body of arm, like armor, like a knight's armor that's given to us. Why? Because we need to do this to fulfill his evangelical missions. Imagine if there's no more lay missionaries in this earth, right? It's, it's going to be hard. Right? Imagine if there's no parish leaders, you know, that are not only parish leaders, but Catholic leaders that are standing up or organizing pro-life movements, who are organizing feeding the poor, who are organizing helping our brothers and sisters physically, who are, who are lay ministers, who are Eucharistic ministers, who are sacristans. Imagine if there's no people empowered to do these things. It's hard to continue our mission as a church. Amen. So the charismatic gifts are here to help us, us, to do the evangelical mission. Discerning the signs of the times, it changes, and interpreting them in the light of the gospel. Like now, there's too many things in social media and fake news. So there's people now of faith you know, going into that realm and trying to still spread Christ in the online world. 
gifts of the Holy Spirit. That is given. Right? So let me discuss to you some charismatic gifts. In CFC, uh, we ask, we generally ask for charismatic gifts. Okay, so there are two teaching gifts. Uh, this is a summary. Two teaching gifts, wisdom and knowledge, three sign gifts, faith, healing, and miracles, and two revelational gifts, prophecy, discernment of spirits, tongues, the gift of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. It is in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 and 4, 11. They said these are different spirit. These are different gifts, but come from one spirit. Okay, and in these verses, these nine gifts are being said. Um, let me try to go one by one in these gifts. There's a gift of wisdom. It's like guidance on how to live as a Christian life. You know, after being empowered by the Spirit, it's like you're, these are not powers like Avengers, okay? not like Spider-Man, Captain America. No, these are, these are things that you realize when you get empowered by the Holy Spirit. First is the gift of wisdom. God gives us to, you know, just know the basic rules of life more clearly. You know, at some point you would see, oh, this is what God wants me to do. This is what I need to do in my life. I'll just go on to it very fast. Hopefully not too fast, but uh, as we go on after the CLP, there are more teaching tracks on Couples for Christ. You'll be amazed how much, right? And I, I still learn a lot. Uh, after almost 20 years in service but but there's some talks about this that will that will you know give in detail what these are at i'm just explaining to you in brief these gifts that the holy spirit bestows on us to or god bestows on us when the holy spirit is 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 in us the second is the gift of knowledge right uh, people when they're empowered by the spirit has more understanding of the truth and the mystery of christ knowledge wise like they tend to they tend to give teachings that stand in front and give talks they read a lot they study more even in songs they feel the songs more or the lyrics you know it's just you know it's like god opening up your mind and saying oh yes lord thank you but of course this is guided by the holy spirit there's a gift of faith right people after being empowered by the holy spirit uh, just granted the charismatic gift of faith. It's a special gift of prayer. You know, I know people who, who were quiet, but their prayers are more intimate, who understands more, who directs their prayer more to the Holy Spirit. It's just that a deeper meaning of prayer and a deeper meaning of their spiritual life. People are given the gift of faith. There's also the gift of healing. The Holy Spirit can manifest this special gift through any believer, any one of us can do healing. So he can heal someone, heal any kind of disease, illness, and sickness. This is not magic. It's not supernatural. I've seen it with my own eyes. People in front of me standing up or being cured by illness, right? And all of us has this when the Holy Spirit is. But of course, you need to be believers for this to manifest. If you just believe, be like, just faith like a mustard seed. You can move mountains, right? If you believe in healing, then yes, it is possible. And God gives it to us for free. He gives it to you as gifts. You didn't even need to ask for it. A gift is something picked and given to you personally, right? Next, the gift of miracles. Supernatural activity from him. There's a lot of supernatural things that even science cannot explain. Even science cannot explain or even in basic rules of man cannot explain, right? Because the God, God gives these gifts of miracles. It's, it's hard to believe, but multiplication of food, walking on water, healing the sick is still possible today. And it's still happening. It's still happening. It's not something of fiction or movies. Why? It's the Holy Spirit is there. And this is proven. It has been experienced by a lot of people. There's the gift of prophecy. This is a gift by which somebody receives a message from God. 
for an individual or for the whole community. Later, when we pray, there are times when we pray, sometimes you are misguided and where you're going to focus. But when it's hard to explain the Holy Spirit, really, but when you get empowered, when you just pray and say yes and receive that fullness, your mind will become clear and you will hear God. You will hear God talking to you. And there are times that you will hear him telling you to tell people, to tell people. Simple message. You don't need to go to the pulpit. It may be for your wife, your husband, your son, your daughter. This is prophecy. God gives it to us. There's also the gift of discernment of spirit. This is the gift of which a person tells whether a situation, like, like what path he will take, or is the path he, he's taking is from God or not? Right? The discernment of spirit. There's also the gift of tongues. It's a gift of praise that is meant to enrich our prayer life. Right? We should desire for this gift, actually. I'll go back to this gift later. And then interpretation of tongues. Sometimes there are, I've, I've seen people speak in different languages, but it's useless for me. If somebody is getting blessed by God to speak in Chinese, I won't understand it. Right? So it's useless. But somebody, God gives the interpretation of tongues to other people so they could interpret what that guy is saying. Uh, this is you, especially when the prophecy is hard to understand, right? Like visions too. Like somebody sees, oh my God, brother Butch, uh, uh, we were praying and I was, I'm was, i seeing a dove in my mind. What does that mean? You know, I cannot just interpret it. But through the Holy Spirit, some people are given gifts to interpret and say, oh, the Lord is very clear saying, this is a message for you, right? So let me go back to the gift of tongues, right? If I'm going to choose one gift to explain tonight, this is the gift that I'll go to. Why? First, it is a gift. That's very important. A gift is something that is special. And if you are getting, if you are called to a birthday party, you would go to the mall, Target, or Walmart, or whatever. You would pick out a gift. Right, that is meant for the, the recipient. That is, you think he will enjoy. You spend your whole day picking a gift, you wrap it, and then you give it to him. Right? And, and of course, hopefully the guy enjoys it, right? So, first, a gift is something that God picked up for you, and he knows that you will need in your life. To experience the fullness of life and joy of the Spirit, these gifts are going to manifest in us. It is a gift from God. Next is we should ask for it in faith. And then we should cooperate with all these gifts that we receive. But the gift of tongues is a gift of praise. You know, it is, it is meant to enrich our prayer life. Uh, later, when we pray, if the Lord is manifesting his gifts to you immediately, and it's like you want to pray to God, but you're your words are not enough, just open your mouth and just say, Alleluia, like 10 times or 20 times, right? Or just say, just make a sound, la, la, la. You don't need to be weirded about it. It's just you making sounds. You can even make a sound right now, right? I hope I could hear you, but uh, you're sitting there right now. Can you say, la, 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 la? I trust you, okay? One, two, three. See, it's you making a sound. Nothing supernatural about that. We were born into this world making that sound. Remember when you went out of your mom, you said, bah, wah, 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 you're crying. So, so we make a sound. So later, if we are praying and you feel like you want to express to God the joy that you are feeling, then just make a sound and tell God, I don't have any words, make this into a prayer. That is one of the greatest praise and prayers a man can give back to God. Huh? Why? I cannot even understand the sound. Yeah, but it comes from your heart. It surpasses the sound. It surpasses logic. Your prayer is going to be pure that not even the devil can understand what you're saying. Because it's your heart and God. This is my favorite gift. Why? Because of that. Because of that, because it surpasses words. 
it surpasses logic. It is just my spirit and God's spirit connecting to it. Again, these gifts are not power like my, the Thor or Captain America or Iron Man or Batman. It's not that. You don't wait for this power to manifest. It's always in you. It's just making a sound, right? <laughs> la, la, la. Just make a sound. Or hallelujah. Or ba, ba, ba. Just make that. But in your heart, you're saying, Lord, I ran out of words. I'm making this sound because I want to honor you for this joy I don't see. Beautiful, right? This is just one of the gifts. There are eight more. Hopefully, in the future, we have time to discuss all of these gifts. Because you will be amazed and realize that God left these gifts here for us. And some of us are not using them. This is not just in couples to Christ. These gifts are not just in the Catholic Church. It's in our, with our Christian brothers and sisters too. There are more people now in the world that praise God in the gift of tongues than that, that aren't. So, you know, jump on that bus, experience it. Not experience it, but you know, make sure you, you, you can pray like that. I hope and pray that you experience that prayer. After we receive these gifts, how do we enkindle these gifts in the power of the Spirit? As I've said, the power, the gifts are already in us. From the day we were baptized and became a mem official members of the Catholic Church. It also strengthened through the sacrament of confirmation after baptism. The enkindling means relighting of these gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit will be in a form of prayer. Tonight, after this, I'm going to leave you to your groups. After this talk, I just have one, like two sentences more. I'll leave you to your groups and discuss the gifts or what the Holy Spirit is for you. And then you come back and I will lead you into prayer. All of us will pray together. Let us let us re-enkindle that gift of the Spirit in us. I'll lead you into prayer and let us all experience fullness of joy, this promise of God. Uh, this prayer is basically between you and God. You know, it's like, this is not baptism. This is not any other thing. It's not a second baptism even. No, but this is a prayer that would acknowledge the Holy Spirit in you and experience God in a different way. We also enkindle the gift of the Spirit again through prayer, what we're going to do tonight, uh, through scripture, studying the Bible, to sanctify your daily life, to serve in a community in your parish or in couples for Christ, and to be active in participation to the bigger church that we have. Okay. To end, before the, the group discussion, let me just uh, remind you of this. God offers each of you personally, I'm talking to you personally, not as a group. God offers each of you a new life. And this new life in the Holy Spirit is the normal Christian life. It is the authentic Christian life, and God desires for it all, desires for you to have it. Saying that, we need to be open. Better yet, we need to desire it. To desiring, have faith that you will receive the Spirit. Because God so promised. Look forward to this new life and experience your own Pentecost. Experience your own Pentecost, brothers and sisters. And remember that there's no Pentecost without the Virgin Mary. Always remember that. I want to put it in there. Right? So now, thank you for listening to me. I'm going to leave you with Brother Abe for a discussion. And then after the discussion, we come back. Then we lead you into prayer. Then we close this session tonight. Thank you for listening. Brother Abe. Thank you, Brother Talk. Uh, Brother Bochok. 
Okay, let me see. Okay. So we are on our discussion uh, part. So we have two questions for you. Number one is, who is the Holy Spirit for you? And then number two, which among the gifts do you want to receive and why? So let me repeat that question to you. Who is the Holy Spirit for you? Which among the gifts do you want to receive and why? And Brother Bochok uh, explained uh, very well those nine charismatic gifts of the Holy Spirit. Prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, wisdom, knowledge, discernment, faith. Miracles and healing. So which among the gifts you want to receive? So I'm, I'm going to ask Eloisa to send you into the breakout rooms. Um, so you have 15 minutes to 15 minutes to um, do the discussion and share your reflection on these two questions. Usually in, you know, during the, the last five sessions, we usually end after the discussion, we we usually end it, but tonight is a special session because we will pray over um, to you, the candidates. And we have, you know, we have commitment, wow. prayer, pray over session and full worship. And I'm, I'm going to turn it over again to Brother Bocho to lead us uh, to prayer. Good evening. It's me again. But I have a different friend here <laughs> because we're going to pray. And uh, we're going to sing, I'm going to sing some songs uh, for meditation. Can you hear me good? Can Thumbs up if you hear me good, if you can understand me. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, um, as I've said earlier, that we are going to pray for the release of the Holy Spirit in us. We're going to pray for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. It's nothing special, though. It's not a different kind of prayer. It's just a prayer that is intimate. It's a prayer that, that you put your whole body and your time and your concentration and your focus on one thing. We're not going to pray about world peace or even ending COVID. We're just going to pray for the empowerment of the Spirit. That's our main goal. And all the wonderful things will happen after. Right. But what's important today is, you know, in Couples for Christ, we do not force, or even in the whole Christian and Catholic Church, God never forces anything on you. Right. But I'm asking you, and we are asking you to say yes to this, but hopefully my explanation earlier makes you understand what we're saying yes to. It's not a contract. You don't need to attend. Uh, you put your like 60% of your time in this. I'm not saying that. That will follow after. Don't think of what happens after. But I just want you to focus on that simple thing tonight. Saying, Lord, I want to experience fullness of joy. I want the release of that Holy Spirit in me. And let's see. I want to experience you in a different intimate way. All right? Clear? I'm not even going to pray for very long. It's just very clear, very straightforward. We're going to take out everything in our lives that is not of Him, that is mostly the desires of our flesh, and we're going to infill it with the Holy Spirit. And let us be consumed by His love, His embrace, and let us be consumed by by his his holy spirit so how are we going to do this so i'm going to sing a song called the uh, spirit of the living god and uh brother abe hopefully you can show it later when i sing it j just now and then i don't want you to sing just follow just follow the the words and make it as a prayer sing it back to god right because i, I think this this song and like summarizes what we talked about and then i'm gonna you're going to answer some questions. I know you're familiar with these questions, right? These questions. Uh, can you see it? All right. You just answer the one in black. Oh, all right. Wait. 
there you go. Number one is let's practice first, okay? Do you renounce Satan and all wrongdoing? Answer, yes, I do, right? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died to free us from our sins and that he rose to bring us new life? Yes, I, yes, do. I, do. Yes, I do. The last question is, will I follow Jesus as your Lord? Yes, yes I, I will. will. Right? So yes, I, I hope will. you are, Let's understand this. The first... This is familiar to you guys, right? Especially if you've been into, you've been godparents or like Easter, like Pentecost, <laughs> when you are our, our vows, right? Today, we're going to answer it. When you're godparents, you answer it uh, for the kid and for yourself. But today, we renew our vows. We renew, we renew it in our hearts. And, and even without a priest, then tell it to God. Talk to God straight. So first is, do you renounce Satan and all wrongdoing? 180 degrees. We have to turn around from sin and never to look at it again. And we're not saying get out of sin. We're saying renounce. You know how heavy that word is, renounce? It means you leave my life, never come back. Second question is saying, do you believe in Jesus? He's the son of God, that he died to free us from our sins and that he rose to bring us to life. It's saying that what I explained earlier, Jesus... I accept you into my life as my Lord and Savior, right? I know that you're the only son of God and you died for me. Why do you need to die and suffer to set me free? If you say yes to this, if you're saying, yes, Lord, I acknowledge that in my life. And the third thing that we're going to answer is, will you follow Jesus as your Lord? You know, what, what does the Lord mean? The Lord means he holds your life in his hands. There should be no other person or thing or idea holding your life, but only Christ. It means giving your whole life to, like, to Christ. Your whole life. That includes 100%. Even those that you're hiding from him, you have to give it to him and tell God, I will follow you as my Lord. Because I trust that when I follow you, you will lead me to the right path. Okay? So we're going to sing a song. Uh, Brother Abe is going to show the spirit of the living God. And then I'm going to sing it to you. And then you pray with me. All right? And then I ask you these questions. And then you just follow my voice. Just follow my voice. Okay? Are you ready to pray? <laughs> yes. For me, praying is a decision. Sorry, sorry about that. Praying is a decision for me. It's a, something you close your eyes and tell God, I want to pray. You don't need to shout. You don't need to, you don't need to, to tell the whole world you're praying. But the Lord said, but go to the room. Lock your doors, lock your windows. Just pray to me. So let's make this our prayer tonight. So I want you to be as comfortable as you are, wherever you are. If you're with your husband, you're with your wife, uh, I suggest you hold her hand or put your arms around her and you pray together. You know, this is really also nice to experience as a couple. Let's lift out our relationships to heaven. Just, just relax. We're going to pray. We're not going to do anything supernatural or anything. We're just going to pray and you're going to follow my voice. Let's do this as the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We worship you, God. We praise your name. We give you praise. We honor you. You are King. You are my Savior. Oh, Lord God, tonight, my friends are here in front of me praying with me. And we want to experience you. We want to experience your promise of the Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you as God of our life. We acknowledge you as the most powerful being in our life. And we acknowledge you as the reason of why I am in where I am today. And tonight, I learned about your Holy Spirit. 
I learned about how you work and how you make us more closer to you one step at a time each day. And Lord, tonight you want me to take a bigger step than usual. Holy Spirit, you are here. Heal me, Holy Spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Make this your prayer. Just follow the lyrics and pray this to God. Spirit of living God, we affirm your presence here. Spirit of living God, we affirm your power here to heal us and to deliver us to faith. For those of you who need healing tonight, for those of you who need deliverance from sin, for those of you who feel empty in your life and needs to be filled with love, ask God to change you. Not physically, but change you spiritually. Make this your prayer. Spirit of the living God, we affirm your presence here, Spirit of the living God, we affirm your power here to heal us. And to deliver us to fail us and to change us, Spirit of God, Spirit. Spirit of God. Brothers and sisters, just close your eyes and just focus on God in your mind. And while I'm praying, think of the blessings that He has given you. Think of all the things that make you smile, make you happy, make you feel inspired. Because these are God's blessings. And God has provided this to us. Especially in this last two years. Well, it's a mix-up of emotions because of what the world is experiencing. Think about God's blessings during this turmoil, during this pandemic. But also think about the hurts. Think about the temptation, the tests. Think about the pain. Think about the fear that you've experienced. Thank you for them too. Why? Because God, through all of these things you had me experience, you made me stronger. You made me embrace you more, God. Thank you for the people that you have surrounded me with. Thank you for calling me to this Christian life program. Thank you for calling me back to the faith, our church. Thank you for making me realize 
that your love is greater than any other pandemic there is. Thank you, God, for the blessings that I receive materially in my life. Thank you for providing food. Thank you for providing, for providing the basic things in my life. I offer praise and thanks. Thank you, God, for providing and being there for me always since I was young up to now. Thank you, God, for being there in my darkest and deepest pain, my deepest experience in life. When I was so lonely, I was so sad, I was feeling alone. Thank you, Lord, for letting yourself manifest in those moments. Thank you, Lord, for carrying me when I'm down. Thank you, Lord, for always being by my side. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the healer, the paraclete, the one who gives life. Thank you, Lord, for letting me know him tonight. Thank you, Lord, for introducing to me something that I long for, what I'm searching for. Father, I open my hearts to you tonight. Father, I open my whole life to you. You're not asking for a lot. You just want me to say yes, God. But I know that yes would be a big step for me today. Lord, tonight, I want you to touch my heart. I want you to let me feel your embrace. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray that everyone on this prayer listening to me right now be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Pour unto them the gifts and fruits of the Spirit and let them feel you instantly right now. Touch their heart. Embrace them. Show yourself to them. God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, receive the Holy Spirit and His graces right now. In Jesus' name, oh God. For those that are sick right now in this prayer, heal them instantly. For those who feel empty and feel lost, Lord, fill them with your love and show them the path home. Show them the path to where they're meant to be, where you created them. Oh God, in Jesus' name right now, give them a new heart and give them a new spirit. Empower them. Enkindle in them that fire inside of their hearts that you gave to them through confirmation and baptism. In Jesus' name, God, let them feel joy. Brothers and sisters, talk to God. Talk to God and tell the Lord what you are feeling right now. Express what you are feeling. Tell Him what you see. Tell Him what you feel. Just tell Him in your little way. Because the Lord healed us. The Lord filled us. The Lord delivered us. Mighty Father, I pray for all the people that is around me. I pray that they use the gifts that you have given me now so I could be instruments of you to them. So 
so I could be witnesses and tell the truth and your love that you are offering for free. You just have to say yes. Lord, heal everyone that we're thinking of right now. Use the gift of healing that you have given us. Heal them instantly, physically, for any sickness. Heal them from COVID, oh God. Heal them from cancer. Heal them from other disease, especially those that are not uh, possible for human means. Heal my friends. Heal me. Heal my relatives who are also lost that needs healing spiritually and emotionally. And heal me too, God. Father, you take me home. My day-to-day -day life, you reveal to me the right path to go home. The right path to your kingdom. Always enkindle the fire in me. And Lord, may this unexplainable joy that I'm feeling right now while I'm praying, may this smile in my face be always, always be there. May it always be there. Thank you, God. Because I know from now on you will be in every step of this journey. Thank you, God, for empowering me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for clothing me with the power from on high. I honor you. And I praise you. I give you glory. Thanks. My King and my Lord. Amen. So glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So what's in the beginning is now and ever shall be. World, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Woo! Thumbs up. How did that feel? Really good? Oh, good. God. Yeah. Imagine we're not even together physically in one room. Yeah, we're looking at different squares in front of our monitors with faces of people. But the Lord, through His Holy Spirit, gathered us together in one place. Simple prayer. Who experienced joy while we were praying? It's joy and peace while we were praying, right? Sometimes you can't explain it, but it's like that feeling is very different. Well, don't think anywhere else. That's the Holy Spirit, right? A Holy Spirit that we really need, especially at this time, when a lot of people are giving up, being hopeless. Just remember, He's going to be there for you. You have to pray every day, brothers and sisters. You have to pray every day. Promise me that. This is your homework. Pray every day from now on, every night. Schedule it. And make sure you, you make the schedule, all right? Because God is going to wait for you. Second thing, Satan will try to rob you of the Holy Spirit. He will, try, he will tell you, you didn't receive anything. You're not a changed person. You're the same. He's going to rob you of this gift. But don't worry. 2,000 years ago, we defeated him. That's why he's under us. So he can't take it away. God is going to be with you. Just believe that you are a changed person. And that joy you're feeling is the manifestation of, manifestation of the Spirit. Right? Remember, we gained that union with God. That's it. Right? Next thing I want to say is not all your problems will go away tomorrow. This is not magic. <laughs> right? When you, after this, you still have your car loans. You still have people that don't talk to you. You still have your relatives that are mad at you. Yeah, it's still going to be the same. But the difference is now every time you encounter the same problems tomorrow, you have the gifts of the Spirit with you to be missionaries. And you have the Holy Spirit with you. He's going to be with you in all of these problems, right? He's going to be with you. And, and I promise you, there will come a time that all of these problems will disappear. One more thing I'd like to tell you is this is just the beginning. Oh, no. One more thing. I forgot. Experience God. Look for things that changed in you tomorrow and point it out. Like, oh, my God, I'm praying more. Right? I, I understand the prayer more. I, I, I long to pray now, God. Point it out. Oh, yes, I changed in that way. Right? Like when you go to Mass on Sunday, 
you tend to understand more. Oh, it's the same as what Christ was trying to tell me. Point it out. Everything that changed in you, point it out. And I promise you, 100%, it will be for the good. Right? Because this is the Holy Spirit working for you. Pray every day. If you didn't uh, pray in tongues or you didn't receive some of the gifts, practice every day. Instead of asking for God in your prayer, you praise God first. You know? Because this is just the beginning of another life. This is the beginning of a journey that is so amazing and wonderful that even if I'm, I have experienced this like a quarter of a, 25 years ago, I'm still learning new things now. That's how amazing it is. Speaking of praising to the Lord, I want you to focus your prayer now instead of asking for God first. I want you to just praise God. If you notice on the start of our prayer, I started praising him by just saying good things to him. Like saying, Lord, you are great. You're my healer. You're my redeemer. I worship you. I praise your name forever. Right? Praise him first. Practice praising every day. You praise and praise God. You praise him in song. Like from now on, every time you sing a song for God, remember it is a prayer. And then every time you sing, put pour down, pour your hearts out. Make those words mean it. Right? So tonight we're gonna end by singing a fast song and singing Spirit of the Living God again. But this time I want you to join in. Even if you're muted, I want you to join in and use your voices. Right? And in the middle of the song, like after the fast song, I'm just gonna strum my guitar like this. And I want you to use your voice and tell good things to the Lord. In your own words. Tell good things to the Lord. Like, Lord, you are my healer. Lord, remember that time you saved me uh, from, from my sickness? Lord, you are the great one. Lord, you provide for me. Just say good things to him. Why? Because we praise him. And when we praise God, he inhabits our praise. And then good things start to happen. Miracles start to happen. Healing start to happen. So when we praise God, it is for us. Yes, he becomes joyful too, but he gives it a gift for us. So after a song, let's praise him. And with our own voices, just use your voice. Don't be, don't be silent. Use your voice. Right? And just praise God. If you don't know what to say, just say Alleluia again and again. That's praise already to him. What's important is I want you to be in your own zone. I want you to be in your own prayer. I want you to understand and accept that you are praying and that the Lord is listening. So are you ready? If you want to stand up, I invite you to stand up and clap your hands during this fast song. But if you feel like just sitting down and just, you know, praying to God, you can do whatever you want. But always remember, the Lord is here with us. The Holy Spirit is here with us. All right? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we want to end this tonight. We want to end this tonight with praise, with glory, with a joyful song. Because that's how you taught us to, to celebrate with song. In the Old Testament, in Psalms, in Apostles, even the Israelites, they sang with harps, lyres, and tambourines. Why? Because they proclaim you as king. Because they proclaim you joyfully. So let's start by saying good things to God. Let's praise Him. We praise you, Lord. Glory to you, God, in the highest. My King and my Lord and my Jesus, we worship you. If you feel like raising your hands, if you feel like you know kneeling down or just looking up or putting clasping your hands in prayer, feel free. Express yourself on how you want to express yourself. Lord, when the power comes over us, we will be witnesses till the end of the earth. You shall be clothed with power from on high when the Holy Spirit comes to you. And you shall be my witnesses throughout the ends of the earth. You shall be clothed with power from on high when the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you shall be my witnesses 
throughout the ends of the earth. Come on. Go forth through all the world and tell the good news. Proclaim God's kingdom has come through the triumph of His Son. You shall be clothed with power from on high. That's true. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you shall be my witnesses throughout the ends of the earth. You shall be clothed with power from on high. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you shall be my witnesses throughout the ends of the earth. The works that I have done, you also shall do. And still there's more to come, for my spirit rests on you. Be clothed with power from on high, when the Holy Spirit comes to you. You shall be my witnesses throughout the ends of the earth. You shall be clothed with power from on high. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, then you shall be my witnesses throughout the ends of the earth. Let's proclaim the deaf. The deaf shall hear my voice. The blind shall see, the lame shall leap for joy, and the captive shall be free. You shall be clothed with power from on high, when the Holy Spirit comes to you. And you shall be my witnesses throughout the ends of the earth. One more time. You shall be clothed with power from on high. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you shall be my witnesses throughout the ends of the earth. Throughout the ends of the earth. Let's praise Him. We we'll glorify You, God. You're King of Kings. You're Lord of Lords. You're mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And glory to You, Jesus. Worship Your name. You healed me. You are provider. We worship You, Jesus Christ. Glory to You, Almighty God. Father, we sang this earlier. But Lord, as a group, we still ask you to always fill us. We always ask you to deliver us from harm. We ask you to always fill us with your spirit, with your water of cleansing. We ask you to change our lives. Empower us, God. Feel the Holy Spirit right now. Just feel it in your body. Feel his embrace, his physical embrace. Spirit of the living God, we affirm your presence here. Spirit of the living God, we affirm your power here. i 
just use your voices use the sound use your own voice let's experience god's gifts together so open your mouth and just say hallelujah lord form these sounds that we make surpass logic surpass sound let us praise you for the gifts that you have given to us hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And may you always be praised. Mama Mary and Saint Joseph always prayed for us to your son, Jesus Christ. All the angels and saints be with us too. All of this, Lord, we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. O oh, glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening to me tonight, and nice meeting you all, and hopefully someday we can meet face to face. Hallelujah! Lord be praised. Hallelujah. Charismatic! <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Anne. Yeah. <laughs> so, <I'm> <laughs> so before we end, first of all, I'd like to thank Brother Bochok for, first of all, the teaching and for leading us in this full worship. And it's really a good experience to experience the Holy Spirit in our lives and especially in our session. Tonight. So, actually, I'm, I'm, I want to give the floor to anybody who wants to share if they, you know, if they felt anything special uh, during the worship or even in the teaching. So, before we end, we like maybe Anne could start because. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow! Thank you! Thank you so much! I really felt you were talking to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you write those songs? Are you asking me? <laughs> no, they're, they're songs that we usually sing in the community. We sing the always. These are just some of my favorites. Thank yeah. you for using your gifts. For well, the thank whole you. Well, song, <laughs> we can sing all night long. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, we can. Thank you so much. All right. The blessing. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Uh, who else? Maybe one more or two more who wants to share anything that, you know. Eloisa, you want to share? <laughs> because your face. <laughs> you want me to share? I found <laughs> okay. uh, peace and joy actually singing. And, you know, through the songs, you know me. I'm very, you know, I sing a lot <laughs> coming out of my soul, <laughs> you know. And, uh, okay all right so i have a feeling mirna wants to say something okay <laughs> <laughs> we have two mirnas so yeah who's mirna, mirna, texan. mirna texan i think mirna texan? okay <laughs> yeah let the world hear it is, is she in mute or yeah, well, I feel, oh, okay. I, I, I felt the peace and joy. Thank you, Mirna. That's all we are asking for in this world, isn't it? To have peace and joy. I mean, that's 
That's, I think that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. I know the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, peace and joy. There's nine of them. So two of them are peace and joy. And, and, and Holy Spirit gave it to you, gave it to Eloisa, gave it to Anne, and be sure they gave it to all the participants and the team that we are, are with us tonight. So uh, before I end some announcement, let me, uh, some few announcements. Because our CLP will end in two weeks. I know you're already sad, isn't it? Because it has become part of your Tuesday, oh no, of your Friday evening for the last six weeks. Uh, but um, so on um, November 19, we'll have the graduation and the dedication night. So there's anything, there's any session you don't want to miss is session number eight, Transformation in Christ. Because remember in the beginning, I told you the goals of our CLP is transformation. And we're checking you out on, on November 19 if transformation has happened in your life. Uh, so make, your, make yourself available to that. And since we cannot meet in person for, for the dedication or for the graduation, we'll have a Thanksgiving fellowship. Uh, we don't know yet if it's the day after, Saturday, November 20 or November 21, Sunday. So we'll have a potluck and, you know, as a form of Thanksgiving, uh, not only for the team, but, but of course, like I said in the beginning, the participants, you are the VIP in the CLP and, you know, we are here for you. And of course, we want to thank God for all the things uh, that he has done for all the inspiration for giving us good speakers uh, for this last six session. And, and we have two more sessions that we have good speakers to tell you about their and she, um, I mean, their experience with God and the Holy Spirit. Um, all right. <laughs> I think that's it for me. And we'll end with a closing prayer. Let me share our closing prayer. Okay. All right. Um, we're still in the presence of God and we thank him and bless him for joining us in this wonderful talk number six, the Holy Spirit. I think God is asking us to have a relationship with him and feel his power in our lives. The same way we have relationship with God the Father and God the Son and he is, the Holy Spirit is the one promised by Jesus Christ. And he is here with us. And we have to use him. I mean, God, Jesus Christ gave us to him so that we can use him as the paracle, as the comforter. Okay. So for our closing prayer, let us say this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your compassionate and merciful love. Grant me the, gr the grace to remember at all times that you came to save us and to be our friend and brother. I open myself to your blessings, forgiveness, and graces. I offer to you the areas in my life that I'm asking for your love to manifest. Lord, grant me the grace to know and love you more and to love my neighbors. Today, I declare that I'm your beloved child. Amen. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.